the yeah. Educational Physics Podcast. Hello, my name is João Figueiredo and uh, welcome to the Educational Physics Podcast. This is the first episode, so consider this a test drive. Um, why am I doing this? So first of all, maybe I'd like to clarify the intent behind this podcast. I believe that a lot is not being talked about when it comes to education, especially uh, when it comes to music education. And nowadays, with the online education world being an ever-growing monster, uh, I find it more and more important to discuss the core of education, students, psychology, and what the future has uh, prepared for us. My first guest is Klaus Hessler. Klaus is a drummer, a musician, an educator, a clinician, uh, an all-round super cool guy that I had the pleasure to meet for the first time uh, probably in 2010 perhaps at a drum festival and I saw him perform. I was just mind blown. Now, I had the pleasure to work with Klaus after that and we hosted a couple of clinics together and it was a lot of fun and very inspirational and I got to understand the mind behind the player. Today we will talk about his relationship with Jim Chapin, Don Famularo, his thoughts on online education and a few other bits and bobs. So with no further ado, here's Klaus Hessler. So, uh, just as a quick explanation as to what this thing is going to be, most likely um, it's going to become a sort of podcast, but we'll see. I have uh, maybe five or six people that I want to talk to as a test drive. I'll see if I'm any good at this, first of all, uh, if people have the patience to talk to me, second of all, and then um, and then we'll see. We'll take it from there. But ideally, that's happening. it's just going to be a place for conversation to about things that... Uh, I believe anyway, maybe I'm, uh, you know, around the wrong people, <laughs> but I don't see these things being talked enough. Um, so I want to get, be, you know, be around the right people, which is basically what I'm doing right now. Um, so, uh, because this conversation will be later published, I want to ask you to, for those who don't know who you are, to introduce yourself, take your time. I know you have a lot to, to say, so the floor is yours. Okay, well, um, my name is Klaus Hessler. I'm a Germany-based educator, pretty much playing the whole planet drum, I should say. Um, my activities are, whoa, how should I call it? I, I work as a, mostly as an educator for drums and drumming. So I, I wrote a couple of books. And with the last one, uh, last one being the Camp Duty update, which takes care about the rich history of of Rudim and and the heritage and all of that, mm -hmm. trying to say bring rudiments and music together again in in the in the broadest sense, and taking care of, of that rudimental roots and, and all that history which there is about um, yeah the rudiments. And uh, there's books about open-handed playing, there's daily drum set workout, which is uh, taking care of, yeah, what it is really that you do as your daily shed, what it is that keeps your keeps your weapons sharp and, and prepares you for certain styles of music and all of that. Um, I brought out a DVD, The Drumming Kairos, which is mostly Mola technique through the through Jim Chapin's eyes, who was one of my most important mentors. So that's just to describe a little bit what I do as an educator. I travel the world playing drum festivals from Mexico to China to uh, to the US. So last year I did Berkeley College of Music. Uh, I played PASIC a couple of times. Um, most leading drum events have seen me at one or the other time yeah so um, so that's it I'm working with my band flux which is a Hammond trio and uh, I'm teaching privately and uh, trying still trying to be a family man and uh, so it's 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 like a, a mixture of here and there and everywhere and uh, yeah trying to get things going <laughs> here and there and everywhere that's right that should be that should be on a t-shirt <laughs> 
<laughs> here, there, and everywhere. Uh, I'm I'm glad you brought up the the books because I wanted I wanted to ask uh, a couple of questions, I guess, and and open up conversation about the the latest book, uh, Camp Updated, because um, one thing, because when um, when we met, I should uh, maybe bring some context into this conversation for the people watching. When we met, you were still writing the book, I believe. And uh, we, we talked over dinner. You, you told me about it and you, you told me what it was about. And immediately I became very fascinated by the fact that you were so passionate about history in general. Because I'm, I'm a bit of a history nerd as well. But um, And that imme immediately caught my attention because, what, well... I guess the question, why would anyone do that when there's the, the, you know, so many things to be distracted by, like Twitter and Snapchat, uh, which I don't use, by the way, that's why I'm joking. <laughs> uh, and, and that's basically my, my first question, I guess. What, um, why that in interest about the history of rudiments and why did you want to bring, a, I guess, a, a fresh approach to them forth? Uh, you know, and, and publish a book only about that, which is for me, for someone like me, super interesting um, and very useful as a teacher because I can now, I have this this book, this one manual that I can introduce to students and as I, as I have, uh, especially now that you've released the, the English version and we should mention that because um, I think the German version came out last year. Yeah. And then uh, maybe uh, what, three months ago or so, you released the English version. Um, and yeah, so I, I've been using the, the new version and taking photocopies uh, of uh, specific pages to, 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 especially my younger students, to get them engaged with that so, with that side of drumming, because everyone wants to do stick tricks and uh, but no drumming at all. <laughs> uh, but why, why that passion? Where, where did that come from? Well, it, a, a part of it, it really goes back to uh, to Chapin, who was big time in, into into sort of historic aspects of drumming, mostly for the fact that uh, that his teacher Sanford Moller was a big fan of that. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, we, we we could elaborate endlessly on 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 the on that special focus that that Moller had on the history of drums and drumming, and he, he was building drums also, and he was he was a big fan of. Of, of rope tension, field drums, and all of that, and 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 the and the and the patterns and the pieces that were played on mm -hmm. instruments like that. Uh, one thing that 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 really made me think about a, a book project in in that regard was uh, that many students um, that I would take through, I don't know, Charlie Wilcoxon or the the Pratt book or any any sort of classic rudimental book. Most of the time, I noticed that. People would not really have a concrete idea how they should really interpret this material. So there was all kind of strange, uh, say, uh, I don't know, some guessing mm -hmm. how phrase really played and how should we take, how should we play that drag? Is it more open or how do you do all that? And many of them would not really know how to interpret the these uh, these drumming pieces. Yeah. And um, so I thought, boy, there, there is no book around that, that really tells you about the history and, and, and about the interpretation of, uh, of drumming like that. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. The other thing is that when you go through Charlie Wilcoxon, you only have notes on paper. It's not really connected with music. So nobody is thinking about any accompanying music, which there was in the beginning. So if, if you think about all these, uh, say, classic rudimental pieces like the downfall of Paris and the three camps and, and Diggy and Turkey and the straw and, and all of that, it all comes with the melody which is played from a flute or a fife. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and people don't really know how that complete music is supposed to sound like. We all think it's just done by having a certain poster on the wall and having a certain book in your shelf and that takes care of, of your technical side of things which are in the drumming world. And I'm afraid to say it's not. Mm -hmm. It's because the drumming for some strange reason was separated from the music and uh, and with the and with the mp3s and the flute playing and the play lines which are still in the book. I'm just trying to bring back together the, the, the drumming and the music. So that was uh, uh, one of the major driving forces um, behind the book, actually. 
and that that's a that's a great um i guess not only a great project to to embrace and and, and bring to to like i said earlier to especially to a newer generation because i as i speak to older drummers i i i see that um that's something that they miss that they they kind of almost rebelled against the new generation of drums which i include myself in i'm 31 years old right i started playing after the e2000 so you know i'm a young drummer but uh, and i myself had a little bit of trouble fortunately i had good teachers so they kind of kept me in, in check uh, all the time and if i started going a little bit too fancy with my playing they'll remind me that the one is still where the one is uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my teachers used to tell me that all the time. The, the one doesn't move just because you want it to move. Um, and uh, but but bringing that music and of course, like you said, the the CD that comes with the book re really you know forces uh, the students in a good way to remind themselves that it is about being part of something bigger than just the drumming, right? It's about that whole sphere that is music. Um, it reminds me of, of the project, uh, you know, on a different genre or, or genre of education, uh, of an education tool. But when Tommy Igo released uh, his two books, it had kind of that, let's just learn drum beats. Let's go back to the basics and, and learn what pays the bills once again, right? Because and uh, Tommy Igo also spoke about that in kind of the same way. Like we're starting to lose track of what matters right and uh, i would like to use that uh, what you said as a segue to and i have a, a a set list of questions here that i'd like to ask one of them says only jim chapin right and how that relationship came about because you know i've never met uh, mr chapin <laughs> this is how i would call him but i i never had the pleasure to meet him but it, he was always someone as soon as i knew who he was and i saw a couple of videos on youtube and then i i bought the book uh that that's how young i am that's how he went for me first the youtube and then the book um but uh i i always saw well first of all an extremely passionate drummer and then as i kept digging and then studying the the man an extremely passionate person and uh, you told me a little bit about him in the past uh, i read things i i talked to people who also met him uh, i'm also going to be interviewing interviewing um uh, other former students of him so it's going to be interesting to see where the commonalities are but i know that you had a very special relationship with him. you worked with him a lot not just as a student but as a partner almost so um Tell me all about it. <laughs> well, um, it's uh, you, you mentioned the word passion, and uh, and I can to the very day I, I can I, I I think of few people being or I, I I would even say I I don't think that there are few people who are more passionate than Jim was about drums. It was uh, drums really that was his life, so that was priority number one. And then there was maybe, I don't know, having a, a good bottle of wine and, and eating and, and all of that. And playing golf was very important, but drumming was always top notch. And, and then there was not too much <laughs> else happening. <laughs> uh, and uh, th 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 there's a lot of things uh, to, to, um, to prove that, but, but that, that, that's that's maybe too much for for what you want to know. Well, <laughs> um, the other thing is, um, uh, he, uh, he he was so passionate about it that uh, that he that he felt the inner urge to to forward that information to the next student of of, of drummers, mm -hmm. and um, and that is something which. Uh, uh, which he also was very passionate about, which is teaching and, and, and working working as an educator and forwarding that information that he had to the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it's not that everybody can do that. And, and there, there are people who would better not be teachers, I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say. Yeah. There's, some, there's some natural gift about teaching. And Jim had that. And... Uh, and uh, he, he may not have been a, a drummer um, 
who would go to to university and study his craft there. I mean, that generation of drummers didn't go to university because you couldn't study jazz drums in in a in a university back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It was you 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 learned things by rote and and you studied other drummers and uh, you you were it, it was all happening in the now in the moment. And Jim was very good at that, and he was very passionate about it, which compensated for a lot of things that uh, that many other people, uh, many other teachers may be missing. So, uh, so that was uh, that was very important about him as a person. And I should also mention that that he just was one of the brightest, cleverest people I had ever met. So you could talk to Jim about almost any topic, bring something up, and he would be an expert at it. No, no matter if, if what it is, really. So that that was really impressing, I, I should say, to to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get it, and I think that uh, see, that, that it's very interesting that you say that because of all the people that I've spoken to, who I look up to in a way, a anyway, really doesn't matter which field we're, we're talking about here, is that all these people always seem to have this very broad field of interests and uh, it seems to always kind of come down to what they specialize in but that actually kind of brings a, a question to my mind uh, which you can answer for yourself anyway that you don't need to speak for for anyone else uh, such as uh, Jim Chapin but what makes I guess the question would be what makes out of all the things that we could be interested in and and and, and be knowledgeable about what makes drumming and specifically maybe not specifically but brother music that magnet that we can't and i speak for myself as well here we can't seem to run away from even though i feel like ev every now and then i digress Man, in mind, I start uh, becoming interested in other things, and I read about them, and I I go down those rabbit holes. That fortunately, and I say this, I mean that these days are so easy to feed, because you have the internet. You can just read more and more and more and more, and then somehow you find a way to link all that up back to music. Mm -hmm. what, what's your understanding? What what's about that? It's just so undeniable. You have a predisposition to it, and it could be anything else. It just so happened to be music, or do you think about music that is just more powerful than that? It's not just chance. That's a good question, and and of, of course you you run into people who who don't get anything out of music, and you run into people who are very passionate about it, and and who make it. Uh, uh, say that one major topic in life, yeah, for, for reasons which are beyond what we know. It's 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 really hard to tell. It's it's like you see something and you get attracted by it. And um, uh, what I think is, uh, is interesting about music is that uh, once you're interested in, in, in playing a, a, a musical instrument and you 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 start practicing just for the the fun of enjoying the sound and the and the movements and the and the excitement that, that comes with playing it, um, it makes you uh, it, it it does something to to the all around endurance that that you that that you use to to play that instrument for for not just ten seconds but for a song which may last mm -hmm. three minutes or. Or 30 minutes, or a span of time you wanna you wanna bridge, mm -hmm. and this is something which is uh, which is very important for for kids these days to be able to uh, uh, to to put some some attention which is not just 10 seconds to a certain subject. And music is uh, is a very important um, say field of study for exactly that. Yes. So, on the other hand, I should say music can can move something in uh, in, in the in the way how we look at things. It uh, it, uh, it it can express things which are beyond words, and it's uh, it's something we cannot describe. We are just attracted by it with with no words to describe the action. It's it's like kids watching. Uh, um, I don't know, uh, like a, 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 a fire on a on a on, on a summer night. Mm -hmm. You 
you you light the fire and and all of a sudden everybody stops talking and, and people just stare into the fire they, they don't know what what's so attracting about the fire and, and, and what's so magic it just happens and you do it and you don't need you don't need to explain that you just look at the fire and, and that's pretty much it and you enjoy it and it's it's about the same with the with music and with playing drums when it, when i was attracted to drums it, it I, I didn't need to explain that it was just there I, I knew that was that was that one thing I was in love with and, uh, yeah that, that's very interesting and that, that analogy um, triggered my brain once again because uh, you, you're very you're very you're very right it's, it's that um, the unexplicable that it becomes attractive which is funny because um, I find that the best educators and um, are these people who can somehow reframe what can't be explained and, and not only explain it, but even better than that, they make it in a way that it's very uh, easily digestible. You, you can understand it straight away, even though you don't own that knowledge yet, but you can understand it. So it's a kind of a small, pretty package. And then there you go, go home and learn it. Which makes educators, to your point earlier, a very special kind of people. And, uh, and I will get into the, some of the issues that I personally have. I'm curious about your thoughts with the current state of education. Um, but, uh, because it, it has to do with the pretty packages. Sometimes pe people try to make it only about the package, but, uh, <laughs> there's some, another name that I would like to, to bring to the table before I get into my own, um, personal struggles. Um, which is Dom Famular, which I know that came into your life later. And he's another name. And the reason for why I bring him up is because he's another name that for me, uh, and more than Jim Chapin, for me personally, Dom Famular was really a, a mind shift. Because I met Dom Famular at, at most people do at a, a drum clinic, because he, he does so few of them a year. Um, and uh, I, I went to watch him at a clinic and he was just something else right like you know dom i know dom much 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 less well but i've met him a couple of times after that clinic but i was probably let me see i was probably like 19 years old when i saw him at a clinic and it was everything right i mean he, he's that larger than life kind of character he can play he can talk he can teach um, one of the biggest moments for me that I still use that as, as an image every single time I talk about the molar, for example, was when Dom Familar explained the molar to an audience of all drummers, as you can imagine, and a couple of girlfriends. Um, but not many. And, uh, he, he brings the snare drum to the, to front stage. It was a relatively big, uh, venue, right? So maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred seats. Uh, it was packed, packed. Drummers from all over Portugal travel to go see the man, right? And he brings the snare front stage, no microphone, he left the microphone behind, and he's showing how powerful the molar can be, and he, sma he, he first plays the snare drum, I guess in a normal way, as I would back then, you know, kind of with a stiff kind of movement, just up and down, bam! And not, no moments, right? The, the drum doesn't really open up, doesn't project, and he demonstrates the molar. He does with that flair that Dom Familar has. And I could feel the, 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 the wind. Just like, it baffled me. It was just so mind boggling. How did he do that? Like, I could literally, sound, literally, in my body, just like, okay. There's something <laughs> going on here that I need to, to understand. And the larger point being that when I, I was watching Dom Familaro teach it, he, he was just so, first of all, so knowledgeable, which made him immediately qualified to be a teacher, one would think. But then his skill to be, um, to be understood very easily. He, he's really talking about the real drumming and the real history and the real techniques and yet he makes it look and sound very attractive and uh, and I didn't see anyone uh, let me just put it this way, I didn't see anyone upset or frustrated after that clinic and I can't say that about all clinics, inclu including speaking for myself. Sometimes I leave a little bit like okay uh, but um, 
what was your what is your history with Dom? How did you guys meet? And uh, yeah, your thoughts. Well, uh, the first time we, we met actually was uh, when Dom was uh, was in a jury at a competition where I uh, was part of, um, and that is I should say maybe. 90, let me think, 1991, I think. I was, uh, I was, I was in, in that competition and, uh, it, it was people from all over Germany who would send in tapes. I mean, th that was those little plastic things with like a uh, tape inside that you get. <laughs> you would send that in and, and five people were chosen and they were, and they were to play in that, in that drum festival. Which was which was held back in the day in um, in a city called Koblenz, and uh, and the and the, the the drum event itself had people like Weckel, Simon Phillips, Dom Femilaro, of course, who was hosting the event all the time. Uh, Dennis Chambers, Carla Yuda, whatever you bring up, any name, they they all played there at a certain point. So um, so I was part in, in that uh, in, in that competition, which I did not win, by the way, in case you may be asking. <laughs> Who won? Actually, I I don't know. <laughs> There you go. I, I, I mean, I, I I still I think I, I still have the name somewhere, but I never heard it again. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. So never mind. Yeah. So, he was uh, was part of the jury, and so was uh, and so was Jim, and mm -hmm. so was uh, uh, Gary Chafee. Wow. And uh, let me think who else was Larry London, who was who was still alive back then, died I think two or three years later. Okay, maybe. So so th these are the guys I, I, I still remember. So that was the first time I, I, I ran into uh, into Dom, and of course I, I would see him perform at, at clinics before mm -hmm. day, but um, but then yeah, when we really met, that that was in. Um, 1994 uh, then he, he was taking a, a, a tour with workshops pretty much around the world and, uh, and stopping by the school where I was teaching at that time and he requested to, to have somebody play before him and um, and I would say okay I do it and at the same time I said holy <laughs> shit right so why, why, why did you why did you say that stupid yeah man But anyhow, I, I did it, and I I performed in front of him, and then and then Dom would make his 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 show, and then we would play something in the end together. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was from that day on that uh, uh, that that there was this this relationship starting to uh, to to move to different places. So soon after that, I visited Dom in um, in his home in um, uh, on Long Island to take lessons from. Uh, from Dom and Jim also, who I know by that time already, and yeah. uh, those teachers of, of, of Dom also, uh, which was Al Miller, by the way, who also died a couple of years ago already. Yeah. So that was pretty much the, the, the start of, of our relationship, and uh, it really has turned into uh, not just a teacher-student relationship, but it, it's, it's, it really turned out to be a friendship. So we just talked yesterday, and... Uh, And it was, and, and out of the out of a I don't know 45 minute conversation, we maybe talked like two minutes about drums and drumming, which was oh can we can we fix this and that with that collapsed rudiments poster? Oh yeah, let's let's do that, and like for our next book book project, let's let's have this come out like July uh, 2019 because this is going to 10 year anniversary when Jim has died. So that mm -hmm. was all we talked about drumming. The rest was like. I mean, just the things that that move us besides the drumming. So I mean, th that that just goes to say how uh, how our relationship really is. And uh, uh, back to the man, w what really impressed me was uh, uh, that there was something who who not only played incredibly well and not only described his techniques incredibly well, so everybody could relate to it. Uh, there was also a person. Uh, who was so passionate about about his, his craft and and so uh, uh, 
with, with, with so much empathy for for people and uh, and, and and that community of, of drummers gathering because everybody wanted to learn something about drumming and he he just seemed to embrace that whole room and that whole community and it, it was not about it and wrong it was not about forget what you learned before but now it's it, now it's now you learn the, the the real stuff and and that old stuff just forget it it was it, it was really uh, it, about growth and personal growth and passion for for what we all felt and there was no right or wrong and and there was i think there was a lot of people leaving that room with the idea i want to be like this guy <laughs> and and this is something which not everybody can do and dom is just uh, uh, such a unique figure in that drumming business. Yeah. I don't know of anybody else who, who can do magic like him. I agree. I agree. I was one of those people. I, I knew that I didn't have that in me to be Dom Famula. I knew that, not I have that kind of uh, delusion, but uh, it's just not in my personality. I see myself more... Um, I think, think that uh, Dom would be that uh, scientist that can go on TV and talk about science and make it fun and still be a scientist, I have to stay in the lab. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm too, too much of a nerd. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hopefully one day I'll, I'll, I'll be a tenth of the, the, um, the communicator that, that Dom just is. And that's something that um, for me was very, like you said, I, I was one of those people who left the, the, the venue thinking like, oh my God, I want to be like this guy. This is just insane. Like he's just so comfortable around that, that, that role of, you know what, this is what I do. It's, it's it's pretty much like like going to the going to the movies and uh, and seeing seeing any Disney movie and no matter what kind of movie it is you may like it or not but w when you leave the the cinema you always think the world is not as bad as I thought it was <laughs> there is something out there which is still worth uh, having a look at it, the world is not as bad as I thought so yeah. uh, so it 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 lightens up something in 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 your perspective and in the way you look at things. And Dom has that uh, has that magical talent and that magic gift to to spread this out to people. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, Dom is one of the few people. But I'm a little bit of a like I'm not a negative person. I'm not an optimistic person. I, I see. I tend to see things. I, I don't really hope for the best. Uh, I, I'm uh, like I get ready. I prepare and I, I obsess over things because I'm not a hopeful person. Like that way. But because of that trait of personality that I've got, I, I tend to see people who are overly positive as a little bit annoying. And <laughs> Dom Famularo is the the few people that I don't I don't feel annoyed by it. I feel inspired. There's something very so honest about it that I can't. Some even though I, I, I'm pretty sure I tried, I can't see where 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 the cracks are. Uh, it seems to be all there. <laughs> Because uh, and th that's something that it's it's a powerful thing about um, about uh, educators in general who can bring that forward that that party. and that's something that I personally um, I'm hoping that I'm I'm gonna do one of these conversations with with Dom Famularo as well and I, I'm I'm gonna ask for advice as in how to be happy without being uh, <laughs> but. Uh, if, when when Dom wakes up at seven in the morning and uh, and he's already that positive as it usually is. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 that's that for me is not as impressive as finishing the day still as positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> but uh, it's just uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it, I, I'll I'll uh, I'll expose mo more of that uh, when I ask the next question. <laughs> <laughs> or more of my my own personal um, pessimism, because I'm gonna I'm gonna shift gears a little bit here. And by the way, uh, by all means, um, tell me when we need to stop. Because um, uh, do you have a time limit? I'd like to let me know of, because I'll, I'll I'll be careful and cautious of it. Well, not not really a limit, but if, if we could say uh, uh, we we're. Twenty past two now, now somewhat. Uh, I'd say if we uh, like, uh, 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 because I still need to prepare some other stuff. So mm -hmm. if 
that maybe uh, um, I, I can still go about 30 minutes somewhere there. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 Okay. I have I have my, uh, four more questions, um, and t two of them are for us to have a conversation, and maybe the last two are more uh, kind of shorter and more direct. The next one I think is going to bring up some uh, interesting insight. I hope, uh, especially because of, um, and I'm just going to share this as a premises for this question because the things that I've been struggling with understanding and positioning myself even as a as a teacher and someone who really wants to spend the rest of my life doing this and i have no doubts about that even though i'm pretty sure that the shape of how i'm gonna tackle this monster of education will change and it has been changing uh, which is kind of my life's history in the last 10 years i've been traveling i've been trying to understand where the issues are one thing that i've discovered is that the issues are pretty much the same everywhere that's the first one the the struggles that people have with within themselves when learning are pretty much the same which is good news because that means, uh, it's easier for us to come up with systems that actually help everyone on the other hand i see this uh, spreading of of teaching and i'm going to say that loosely now because of the internet and, and YouTube and especially, especially YouTube and uh, all sorts of video platforms that made what I consider, consider education to be spread itself a little bit thin. So we're trying to reach everyone, but it's kind of becoming almost about the teacher uh, and and uh, less about the students. And that's something that I've always had a little bit of... Uh, I don't quite know how I position... I mean, I know what I think about it, but I don't know how to position myself in that uh, in that spectrum of, okay, on this side you have the guy who only teaches privately, and it's just a local teacher, and on the other side you have someone, and those exist, as you know, who only teach online um, for the masses, if you will. Almost putting out these lectures on specific um, topics. And I guess my my question would be, with the constant and unstoppable, I'm not going to deny that, growth of online education, do you see any... I, 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 can, I can imagine some of your thoughts because I know that you're not... Um, you don't invest a lot of time in that things. So I, I kind of... I can perhaps predict some of the things you're going to say. But... Um, what do you think the biggest issue, and I'm not going to go full negative about this, but the biggest issue about online, online education, but also what do you think the biggest potential is, uh, and, uh, you know, um, what the upside, I guess I could say, online education is? Well, let, let me say um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's really a question of... Uh, what is it that the student wants to know? Where is that, uh, um, say, effort leading towards? Um, now, I, first of all, I, 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 there, there's a lot of, of good and positive sides about it because uh, many, many years ago, I was trying to research on a, on, a, on a certain subject. You just would not find the information. It, it was it was hard to collect the information because. It just was not there. Mm -hmm. With the internet today, the information is everywhere, and uh, uh, along with that is is already th that that big important negative side of, of online information. Um, although the information is out there, there's also a lot of uh, say. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me say bullshit information out there. <laughs> yeah. Let's focus it very. Let, let's talk about it very direct in a in a very clear manner. There's Please. information out there which is, uh, I think, at times not always correct and not always uh, uh, the information is um, prepared in in the most appropriate manner, so everybody can take it in and, and digest it and uh, and create something out of that. Um, 
So th that that's a that's a big topic with with online education. And uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, and, and that to a certain degree goes goes out to the people digesting that information. Many times people just take it in and and they think. Yeah, it's 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 for free. So I'm I'm downloading it. I'm uh, and yeah, we're sharing it and and yeah, I'm forwarding you that and make a copy of this, and, which I think sort of takes away value of, mm -hmm. of that ed ed educational um, content. I I should say, because uh, you 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 must never forget there are people who spend a lot of lifetime to come up with that content with that piece of information uh, somebody may have taken I don't know weeks and months and years to come up with a certain exercise or, or to come up with a certain way of how she or he would look at things and now you share that with the world and and you just download it with a click and you say okay yeah that, that's kind of nice yeah I'm gonna send it to them that, that's not how you how you look at things that that's not how you appreciate that educational effort and mm -hmm. that value of, of, of the information which is there. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of people who only uh, send out these negative s signals in terms of, oh, I saw a certain lesson and uh, I'm going to comment, what kind of what kind of bullshit is that? No music, forget it. Yes. And uh, I mean, chances are that that this person simply may not have had that horizon or that uh, uh, or that level to really evaluate to, to really evaluate th that information and its value in in a proper sense mm -hmm. so uh, i mean so so that really goes out to the to the people looking at the information if you find something useful take good care of it appreciate it and uh and say something good about it. If you find something which you don't like, you you don't need to focus on that. Don't focus on the negative things. Focus on the positive things. Leave a positive comment. If you don't like it, then, yeah, of course you may not like it, but don't focus too much on it. Yeah. I, I just don't get that side of, uh, of, of things, how, how we look at online information. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, it's the, the uh, <laughs> ever since um, YouTube came about probably uh, on day two. Th there was there was someone saying YouTube sucks. It's just <laughs> it's just the way the the human mind seems to operate sometimes. Whatever we can't really understand, either the benefit of even if it's for someone else or or just we don't understand it. Period inside our realm of knowledge that allows to that to click with something, which is what I feel, and that happens. It has happened in my private teaching every now and then uh, as, a, as a side story, like this happened fairly recently. I was showing uh, one of my students, I was showing him, um, I can't now remember, perhaps a video by Benny Grab or, or Vinny, someone like that. So very sophisticated player, right? And the student, like it was, I, m I must add a, a, a caveat, an adult, this is not a kid, an adult, Complete shutdown. Complete shutdown. He just went into like, that sucks. I, I, that's like the worst drumming I've ever seen. How can you debate that, right? He was so certain that that was the worst drummer ever. And looking at someone like Vinny Colaiut or Benny Grab or Buddy Rich or whoever, who are undeniably <laughs> some of the best drummers ever, regardless of taste. And it, that's very difficult to deal at a private level, at, at, a, at a small scale like that, let alone at a global scale when everyone can say anything at all times, 24-7. It, it's, it's a free pass for let, let's destroy everyone and everything that I can't understand. It's very difficult to manage. But on the other side, like, like you, you also mentioned, and, and I appreciate that, is that there's a, a beautiful, and painful freedom to just put out whatever we want. I can uh, <laughs> tomorrow, and this is perhaps why I'm not a negative person, but not very optimistic, because we are just allowing more and more of this to happen and grow at a scale that it might, who knows what's going to swallow what. That's my, my concern here. You know, is the one day the cream rise to the top, or we will just be, you know, completely uh 
invaded by bullshit information by people who are just trying to make a buck and make make a dollar and f in exchange for a like, even if that means to say something like Vini Kolayuta sucks because that attracts more. Likes. Do you know what I mean? And th that passion for attention rather than education is concerning me. Like I see, and I'm not going to name names because I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, focus the conversation on any of that. And I never do that, but there seems to be a section of, um, in an online education of people who focus solely on what sells. For instance, there's a lot of um, information based on gospel chops. I'm just going to use that that as an example. Nothing against gospel chops, nor chops, nor gospel, nothing. But that became kind of this, this brand that people, it's like selling Nike shoes. Gospel chops, boom, the, the, the views level just boom, skyrockets. And other uh, drum teachers, online teachers, started to see that. All right, I'm going to do my thing. On, on I saw this in the last 10 years, this fever. Now seems to be going away a little bit. But this fever of gospel chops. Everyone was doing lessons on gospel chops. And I was like, what's the value in this? I, I am starting to point here. No one is really explaining how to create them. No one is really explaining how to... Uh, where they came from. No one is really explaining things. It's these little five-minute demonstrations, you know, f uh, three, four, blah, 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 boom. All right, don't forget to subscribe. And that's the end of the lesson. It's, it, it was very, and it did more. And I will touch the aspect that these are free, which for me is also an issue, but don't quite also know how to manage that. I'm not smart enough, I guess. But what uh, what my concern is that the lack of substance in, in these teachings makes people who want to teach, and I, now I'm going to speak for myself, but makes people who want to teach at a deeper level and kind of uh, allow me, I guess, uh, in a self-indulgent way and the students to go down these rabbit holes together and have fun as I did with my teachers, as my teachers did with their teachers, I, I, I'll assume they would just go down these journeys trying to understand the history of drumming, the history of music, why do you work this way? Let's talk about uh, physics when talking about rebound, uh, for example, right? Like most of my students especially the younger ones, are so conditioned to these very small, pretty packages that when we do that, not only have the attention spent to, f to stay focused, which I can't do that, but they literally don't like it. They make a conscious decision of like, you, why you, just show me it. <laughs> right? Do the last thing. Just skip all of that. And it's making our job a little bit harder, I, I, I would assume. Because I do feel the difference. I, I've been teaching for a short time. I've been teaching for 10 or 11 years, but I already see the difference. When I start, started teaching, it was a little bit easier to go down this, those crazy rabbit holes of like, you know, what happens when you add velocity to force and blah, blah, blah. You know, stick will move. Now, you, you, I, I, if I'm not showing them a chop, I'm a bad teacher. <laughs> well, I mean, of, of course you are not, but... Uh, uh, but uh, to, to, to me, one, one, of the, one of the key words in, in that regard is, uh, is really to show people and to show students how passionate you are about that process of, of teaching them something. And, um, and, and that's also where, where people like, like Fami Lara, for instance, come into the game. Um, because everybody watching him notices right away, okay, there's somebody who is so passionate about this thing and, and, and about drawing and, and about describing anything that, that's connected with it I want to be like that and uh, and then w and once you catch the attention of, of people and and you and you draw from that special say degree of passion you 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 got people and, uh, and and for me the, the the passion about drumming was uh, I, I just wanted to know everything which there was about. I, I was taking drums apart. So what's inside that screw? And, and did you ever look in, in inside a, a tuning lock? Or what, what happens if, if you remove that that, uh, that 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 hoop? What what's underneath the drum head? Mm -hmm. How is that drum really built? Uh, so I, I wanted to know everything which there was out to, to know that, and uh, and creating that 
spark of, of passion is something which which makes people uh, also interested in, uh, about anything else which they may not originally be interested in but uh, that, that's really the, like the, the the entrance ticket if you if you spark that passion inside of them you, you can do a lot of things which you would normally not be able to do I think yeah and and that is a good point I, I think that Ultimately, what educators focus on is to first um, get the, the students engaged in, in a curious mindset. So they, they should be encouraged to ask questions, which is one of my problems with online education. It's very one-sided. It doesn't really allow the student to direct. It, it is. And, uh, and, 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 you know, it's, it's, not that, it's not that easy to, uh, um, to create any of these online sessions in a, in a way that, that you really teach in the most appropriate. And, and I have experienced that with myself as well, with teaching at, uh, no, no matter if it be, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's a little different with me because you're, you're usually talking to somebody unless you're, you're yeah. on your courses, but, uh, but with the, uh, with the stuff I did online lessons, TV, let's say you have a camera in front of you and you're talking to that camera and, uh, there's nobody in the room who, uh, who just tells you, boy, what is your next step? Or is there a question? Or how do you carry on with, mm -hmm. with the support? You got to know a lot about your strategy of how you teach a certain subject. And you have to remember a lot. But how was it when back in the day when I myself learned it? What were the subjects that, that I was afraid of? And, and what were the, the obstacles that I needed to overcome in that process of becoming a better drummer. So that's one thing you have to keep in your mind because once you relate to that, again, bridging that gap towards passion and showing people that you're passionate about something, which also may help you forget about the frustration you you are tended to, to fall into. Yeah. Right? Because uh, once, 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 you, once you fall back into that negative side of things and not drawing from passion and, and the love for, for the instrument, but all the frustration that may be connected with, <laughs> with, with that process of, of, of teaching somebody something, uh, that, that's, a, that's a minefield. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and plus, if you add to that the fact that, although it's not infinite, but there are multiple ways of learning, And there are multiple ways uh, as to how people process the same information. I think that, and I'm just uh, thinking out loud, but I'll just put it out there. If we could, in these kind of uh, online environments, if we could, instead of having the, 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 you know, the instructor staring at the camera and just teaching, hope trying to go back in time in his own mind, And, and relate to how difficult it was to learn and, and, and manage the, especially the, the pace of the teaching and the, the speed at what they teach. Sometimes that's an issue that I find as well. Some, it's, it feels like they skip steps, right? Because they know. It's very obvious to them. Of course, I'm going to skip that step. I've done it. Uh, and it's, it was like 25 years. I don't need to talk about that step anymore because they, they do struggle with that, um, with that ability to relate to their past self but then you add to that the fact that their past self represents themselves not not an entire community of drummers and, and drum students um so there's also that that issue perhaps if we could have effectively uh, some sort of audience right I, I, of of students in in the room and then start filming those things and and see like okay we have all these different people the students will now not only get the message but then also see one of those students uh, students um responds to the message pick the ones subconsciously of course or maybe not but pick the one like i relate to to the way that guy is learning and now they have these two sides of the equation instead of just the one side And that's very true, but but it, it also uh, it also has a lot to do with uh, with the qualities of the teacher. So yeah. uh, so so you, of of course you do come across teachers who may sit in a in a room with a pad and just the camera, and still they they uh, and still they, they put out great information uh, in in a, in a way that they uh, it it seems they haven't forgotten that that the cow used to be a calf many years ago yes okay? yes and they are, they are teaching with that with that mindset mm -hmm. and also people who maybe 
who may be really good at something, but but once there is nobody there to give them feedback, uh, they just miss out the important steps in the teaching process. Yeah. So, so for them, people and, and audience in, in, in the room may be a, a big help to really structure their teaching process. And uh, chances are they are just doing great with with a, with a couple of people in the room. Chances are they they may possibly suck with nobody in the room. So yeah. that, that really de depends on on your qualities as a as a teacher and how organized you are and how well you know your craft and and how uh, deep you, you go into each and every step mm -hmm. that needs to be taken if you want to uh, if you want to teach a certain subject or a certain exercise or technique or whatever it is absolutely on that note I'd like to ask you what do you think uh, the future of, uh, of online education or education in general we don't need to focus on the online but it's it's what it is um, the future is what do you what do you think it looks like will we see a towards a more interactive because I believe so anyway um, approach to this and uh, or do you see that this will just like I said earlier the, the bad will swallow the good and it's the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> I mean of, of, of course with with the, with the steadily steadily increasing possibilities that technique offers uh, uh, online education uh, will of course expand to a to a much larger level. I'm sure it will. Um, as I said, also depending on on the on the on the on the degree and on the number of technical possibilities that we have. Uh, I pretty much look at this subject of okay, here's real time education with two people in the same room, and here's online education with one person in. Uh, I don't know, Beijing and the other person in Sao Paulo, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if you compare these two, it's pretty much like comparing acoustic drums and electronic drums. You, in, in, no matter how you look at it, you, you, you must not make the mistake of, uh, say, mistaking acoustic drums with electronic drums. It's, it's just something different. It, it's not that one thing is, is bad, one thing or the other thing is good. It's just... Both are very different, and I personally think that that real-time education with two people in the same room will always be something that is very important because there's there's a number which you only pick up with that person in the same room. It's just a divide, which can, in my eyes, never be replaced by something else. But for that online education can be a, a, a really valuable thing for for somebody sitting in Australia and, and thinking, boy, I, I, I've heard about this guy in Germany and, and he, he seems to know a, a thing or two about molar or rudiments or whatsoever. I just want to take two or three lessons uh, with this guy to, to see how he thinks about this and, and that subject. Yeah. That person, it's just a great way to have online education because he, he doesn't have to take a 20-hour flight to go to Frankfurt and then take a train and, and yeah. all of that. And, and spend uh, spend zillions of, 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 of bucks to to do all that. Yeah. Personally, it's great. It's just what it is that you have in mind. Where do you want to go? What are the steps that need to be taken? And uh, and how much are you ready to invest? How much is your passion worth to you? Ask yourself that question and have the answer. Yes, I'm I'm very happy you said that. That one resonated with me uh, quite a bit because it's the well. You mentioned that, and that's uh, fundamentally how I've been taking lessons uh, sporadically every now and then in the last maybe three or four years, just via Skype. Uh, we, we've I've taken uh, three or four lessons with you in the past, uh, and other fellows I really look up to for the exact same reasons, right? Why the hell not? You know, here we are talking. This this is a, a conversation. It could be a, a drum lesson, as we've done in the past. I totally appreciate that, and I love that side of online. The, the access, that's what I really love about it. But then there's the, the downfall that we somehow, and that's something that concerns me and occupies my, my, my thinking, which is I don't want to get rid of it. I just want to um, somehow, well, talk to the right people who can the changes towards a more 
two-sided relationship because I, I think it became too easy to make it one-sided which on on one hand um, I understand why there's a technological issue here that it's difficult to to open the gate both ways uh, via the internet like if you're teaching like a platform like Dremio for example it, it's unmanageable to have all those students interacting at the same time with one less it's just we, we, we need to wait for some sort of uh, AI to sort that out. Uh, and it will. I, I really mean that. But um, but until then, I guess this is, it is what it is. But it opens up the, the door because of the one-sided aspect. A lot of teachers, um, or, or YouTube teachers, if you will, who maybe... I literally know of people who never taught someone in real life. And they put out drum lessons. Like, what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, because they see this, this opportunity to get rid of all the, the pressure and anxiety and they just because, uh, it's somehow easier for them to turn on the camera and just do a video and call that a drum lesson. And that's what we need to be very careful about. And hopefully, uh, the good will swallow the bad and not the other way around. But, uh, I, I think that will be the case. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's just as it is in real life. In, in, in certain in certain cases, you 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 just have allow certain people to talk, and 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 all of a sudden they identify themselves. You just let them talk. After a certain amount of time, you will know. Okay, is there is there a person who has to say, or who's just blabbering? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and and how much value is this kind of that really really turn out no matter if it's online or if it's real time with two people in the same room. Absolutely, I agree with you. I'm glad we, we're leaving this on a positive note. I was a little bit scared <laughs> <laughs> for your time, and uh, I really appreciate that um, you you accepted my invitation to talk to me because, uh, like I said, but not only educators are, we, but then to see if people are interested in listening to these things and 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 make up their own these conversations alone help for anyway. So I'd like to to finish. Have a question it can be something that you actual relationship <laughs> with. There, 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 there is, uh, um, it, it's 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 short and sweet, but uh, here it is. Creativity is an act of rebellion. Ah, I like that because if you if you're creative, uh, it, it it's important that what happens if you always stick to the rules, uh, just creating the, the same over and over again. Mm -hmm. If you uh, if you disregard the rules at a certain point. You will be able to create something new. I mean, th th there's room for for discussion in that topic because uh, it, it it goes without saying that before disobeying the rules, you should know the rules. <laughs> because if you if you don't know the rules, you you cannot rebel against them. <laughs> well said. Uh, I mean, th 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 there's and, and there there's a lot of things which which, which can be added to that, but. But let, let's stay on the surface and, and say creativity is an act of rebellion. Yes, well said. But I, I'm glad you, you mentioned, uh, you, you added those side notes because that's something that I personally believe as well, first of all. Uh, I couldn't agree more with that sentence and I've rebelled many, many times in my life uh, just in order to change my environment and my reality and that's being creative um, regardless of how that manifests itself. Uh, but also, I had to learn, and that was a painful experience, I had to learn that there are rules. <laughs> And I can't just uh, come up with my own laws. Um, and, and so you, you just can't uh, uh, certain rules, and and um, and and, and from, I'm, I'm talking about drumming yeah. rules, if, if if you if you will. Um, I, I say playing open-handed was one of these acts of, of, of rebellion, mm -hmm. and uh, and further searching for for anything technique related in terms of molar and all of that at a at a point back in the 90s when nobody was really uh caring about molar almost in in the in the 2000s when uh, when that topic really bubbled up in in, in, in certain ways and everybody was talking about it. Uh, i already had 10 years of, of experience with it yeah. um same goes for for that for, for anything, I'm, I'm I'm still writing down and researching on collapsed rudiments, changing distances between the notes. 
that's also something which is uh, not respecting a certain rule because uh, who says that a paradiddle is always like that? I mean, traditionally speaking, yes, but uh, uh, if we always stay to the paradiddle or a certain rhythm, in especially that shape or in only that shape, how do you take that to the next step or how do you create music with that if you only allow this one this one of a certain pattern? Mm -hmm. It's just not possible. So in my drumming life, there were a lot of aspects I'd say I, I did not stick to the rules and uh, it may become a, a different drummer and uh, and whenever somebody says, oh, open hanging, that sucks, I just don't like it, I don't believe in it. I said, okay, I'm, I'm fine with that, but uh, uh, it just made me the player I am. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It, it made me, it made my sound more individual, it made me more personal and that's uh, and that's what I like. You don't have to like, it's just... Uh, it's my favorite waste of time. Ah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Actually, it's funny. I'm not going to ask you to answer this question, but uh, perhaps I'll just leave it as food for thought because I, I most likely will ask this question in the future, um, e either to you, but uh, to other guests, which is a mistake. I already know the answer. <laughs> it's just my, my favorite mistake is uh, I have two of them. Okay. Uh, number one is uh, I just don't seem to be able to laugh when I'm playing. Ah, interesting. <laughs> and, and and this has been brought up a couple of times. Why why, why aren't you smiling when when you when you play the drums? And I say uh, I'm I'm enjoying it so much that I just don't find the time to smile. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. Yeah, sure. What's the other one? What's the other mistake? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> the other one is that uh, sometimes I'm just talking too much. Mm, okay, well then uh, you're talking to the guy because <laughs> that would be my favorite mistake as well. Then, <laughs> um, but uh, but there you go, my friend. We did one hour and seven minutes. Wow! I really sure. appreciate this, and uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, I will hopefully be uh, posting this within the next few days. All right, sir. I want to take more time. I really right. appreciate that. And uh, have a good one. <laughs> okay, so have a very Merry Christmas. You Best too. 2018. Say hello to Catherine. And uh, and I, I talk to you soon somewhere on the other side. Absolutely. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.